You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Hi gorgeous, welcome to today's episode all about how to reframe fear. So if you are someone who has a desire or a dream, but you feel fear creep in a lot or you feel like it holds you back, we've all been there. I experience that all the time, but there are some ways to work through it and to see fear as not this stop sign or obstacle that you can't get through but something that you know exactly how to navigate, you know what it is, you know what's going on, and you have some tools to overcome it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, if you hear some banging or construction noises, I have to say, I'm recording this in this beautiful setting where there shouldn't be any background noise, but you know, construction happens and not much you can do about it. So we're just going to roll with it and hope that it's not too strong for our episode. But here's what I want to share with you, because I think especially early on in my business journey, I was so intimidated by fear. I felt like when I was in corporate and I had this dream of leaving and starting my own business. I had so many fears around what would happen and how would I pay my bills and what if I failed and had to go back to corporate and tell everyone. And I let that play in my head for a long time before actually making a move. For those of you who know, even with this podcast, I spent years carrying around this huge microphone, even when we traveled, you know, and we would live in places around the world and I'd have this carry on suitcase and I'd always bring this mic with me because there was the chance that I was going to get up the nerve to launch the podcast. So fear, I get it. Fear is one of those things that happens to all of us. And today I just want to share a few things that are going to hopefully help you move through it, feel like you know what's going on and you know how to conquer it. And as you may know, this is a chapter in my brand new book, Your Bright Life, Get Clear on What You Want, Overcome Self-Doubt and Bring Your Dreams to Life. And it's available now on Amazon or Audible if you prefer an audio version like this. But every single week for the past few weeks, I've just been touching on one of the chapters Each one details a part of the creation process of bringing your dream to life. And so chapter six is all about fear, how to handle it, how to reframe it. And so we'll be just touching on one little piece of it today. You won't find this in the book itself. It'll be all different content, but if you like this, then you may love the book. So definitely check it out. And if you have already, would you mind leaving a review on Amazon? It helps new books and new authors so much to have reviews to make it more discoverable so more people can find it and hopefully it can support them as well. So I read every single one and it would mean so much to me if you leave even a sentence letting me know what you think about the book. All right, thank you so much. So let's talk about fear. What is fear? Here's something that really helped me, was realizing that fear wasn't a sign that I should stop or turn around or not do something, but rather fear was just a very predictable response from my nervous system to something unknown or unfamiliar or a little bit uncomfortable. So if you think about your body and your nervous system, its whole job is to keep you in homeostasis to keep you regulated and safe and comfortable all day long. It's adjusting your body temperature, it's digesting things, it's regulating your hormones. The littlest change in some external circumstance causes your whole body to react. You know, you get into the sun and immediately your body is maintaining your temperature to make sure that you feel really good and that you're at the right level for life to exist, it, you know, start sweating to expel some heat, things like that. So it makes sense that your body is constantly vigilant and on the lookout for anything that's going to make you uncomfortable or that's going to be kind of this unknown external threat to your safety or comfort. 
So if you can think about fear that way, it almost makes it so predictable, doesn't it? Where of course, if you are doing something for the first time, if you are deciding to get out of your routine and reach for a goal in your career, your family life, your passions, of course your body is going to start reacting and saying, okay, this is something new. I'm preparing. I'm surveying the environment to make sure we don't have any threats. And anything new is going to kind of seem like a threat because it's simply something your body doesn't yet know how to manage. So if you can look at fear that way, you can almost see it just for what it is. It's not something that means no. It's not something that means you aren't capable, that you can't do something. It is just a very human, normal body response to something unknown or something uncomfortable. But here's what I want you to ask yourself. What is the bigger discomfort? Because the truth is, you are going to have a bit of discomfort either way. You would feel discomfort if you stay where you are because you feel the pull for something else or something more. And you would also have discomfort going for that thing, trying something new, not knowing what will happen but knowing that it's something you really want to see through. So if you can hold that in your head, which discomfort would you rather endure? If you know discomfort is going to be part of it either way, which one would you rather hold and experience? So I was talking with some mastermind friends last night about this, and one was saying she had a hard time recently because she had to put some boundaries in place with a family member. And what we were talking through is, that's probably uncomfortable, of course, but it's also probably really uncomfortable to not set that boundary and to let that family member walk all over her or have to navigate that situation from not actually just expressing her needs and desires. So if you can just allow yourself to feel that where you're like, yeah, there is going to be some discomfort either way, but which discomfort gets me where I want to go? Which discomfort am I willing to tolerate? Which discomfort actually feels better for my life? And which one is actually a smaller discomfort? Because it is uncomfortable to take a chance on your dreams and to go for something. But I don't know about you, but I think there's almost no greater discomfort than staying in something you've outgrown or staying in a life that no longer feels right for you, or staying small when you know you are just ready to blossom and expand and go after what you really want and make the most of this one life. So it's like, yes, there will be unknowns with that. There will be discomfort. There'll be those growing pains, but at least they're a heck of a lot easier than the discomfort of the next 80 years wondering what if and knowing exactly what you want to do, but not going for it. Does that help you see the contrast? For me, I just use that in so many areas now. I even had a creative decision recently where um, I had to give feedback to a designer that I had to change something. And for me, that was really uncomfortable because I never want to make anyone feel bad or (laughs) insult anyone in any way. But I knew that if I gave the feedback to the designer, it would be such less of a discomfort in that moment than it would be for an entire lifetime of having something up on a website or a program that just wasn't actually executing on my vision and how I wanted to serve my people. You know what I mean? So just like as another example, I could really see, okay, I can hold this discomfort for a second of expressing my needs and what I desire. And maybe like it feels uncomfortable for a moment, but it's so much less than the discomfort I would feel over a lifetime, knowing that I was putting something out there when it wasn't quite true to what I wanted to authentically express in my vision, how I wanted to serve my humans, you know? So I hope all of those examples, whether it's setting a boundary, whether it's communicating your needs, having a tough conversation, or going after what you really want, puts it in perspective that yes, there will be discomfort most likely either way, but which discomfort would you rather live with and endure? And how can you see that discomfort as simply your body reacting and having a very normal, predictable body reaction to something new and unknown? And it's not this thing that you have to put a ton of weight behind or dig into or hold back because of, but rather just look at your body as doing what bodies do, as giving you a reaction to something that it's going to have to figure out and it's going to have to account for, but it will get used to. 
and it will start to perceive as the new normal and the new comfortable environment. You'll just have to get through that first phase of feeling like it's unknown and feeling like it's new and learning how to navigate it. And when you do, then your body will calm down and the fear will calm down, the discomfort goes away. And of course, you'll find the next thing later on. So that's kind of the good news, bad news is as you conquer one fear, it goes away, but then the next one will probably come whenever you're ready to stretch for that next thing. But I just hope that really helps you and shifts your perspective of this is nothing to fear. This is just a normal response for my body trying to protect me, like how kind of it. And it's okay. It's okay because you know that there's a discomfort either way. So you can be empowered to choose the discomfort that you'd rather feel either for a moment or the one for a lifetime, which one is right for you in any situation. I hope this really helps and supports you. And again, if you would like to learn more about how to reframe fear in your own life, then definitely check out Your Bright Life on Amazon or Audible. Thank you so much for listening in. If you love this episode, I have two things you are going to love. One is a free copywriter training full of five steps to build a profitable copywriting business as your own boss, no matter how much experience you're starting with. Copywriting is what took me from a nine to five to freedom as my own boss to travel, choose my schedule, replace my corporate income, and have time to work on creative projects like this podcast. And I'd love to give other women the same opportunity. Another, of course, is my book, Your Bright Life. You can find it on Amazon or Audible where I narrate the audiobook. So it's kind of like a podcast in book form. All of these things are in the podcast show notes. Thank you again for listening. I appreciate you and your review so much. And I'll see you back here next Thursday.